Well, today we're going to talk about, in this session, we're going to talk about um, your goodbye and, and, and uh, good, goodbye heart disease. Goodbye heart disease. It should not be something that, that should be with us all the time. In our previous session, we spoke about goodbye hypertension. And some of the basic principles we set up there, we're just going to build on going uh, to the next session. So we would like to talk about goodbye diabetes. And by the way, I'm going to share a shocking statement with you or two with you uh, this afternoon that you should not miss. Uh, you are probably aware of people around you that are diabetic. And there's ways to help these people to live a better quality of life. And then we're going to talk about goodbye obesity this afternoon at, uh, at 5 o'clock. So don't miss these sessions as, uh, as we build up to them. So goodbye, goodbye, not... Anything but heart disease. Let's talk about goodbye heart disease. And before we start this, I want us to do a prayer. Father, as we invite your presence right now, we ask that you would give us wisdom and understanding in this, in this, in this uh, topic that, that uh, ends the life of many people. And we ask that you would give us, make us good stewards uh, of this knowledge that we would not just listen and go, but that we would listen and do. And this is our prayer, and we thank you for doing this in the lovely name of our Father. Amen. Well, this is what they call the number one killer in the world. The number one killer in the world. By the way, it's not the number one killer in PE. I'll tell you later what's the, the number one killer. And I want you, if you've got your Bibles, to open it to 1 Samuel 10 verse 1. 1 Samuel 10 verse 1. And uh, we are talking about the heart at this session. And so let's just look at what the Bible says about the heart. And uh, let's see where the Lord takes us uh, with this. So uh, if you've got this uh, verse, uh, 1 Samuel 10 verse 1, and we're going to read some verses from there onwards. Um, I need to hear you saying amen, if you've got it. Amen. Uh, we've got a few amen, so uh, we'll carry on. And Samuel took a vial of oil, and he poured it on his head. And he kissed him, and he said, Is it not because Jehovah has anointed you for a leader over his inheritance? Question. When you have departed from me, this is verse 2, today... Then you shall find two men by Rachel's tomb in the border of Benjamin at Zalsa. And they will say to you, These asses which you went to seek are found. And lo, your father is, is quite caring for the asses and sorrows for you. He's, he's quick caring for them and he, he's, he's really sorry for you. He's wondering where, where you are. What shall I do for my son? And you shall go forward from there, and you shall come to the great tree of Tabor. And there you shall meet three men going up to, the, to God, to Bethel, and carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you'll take from their hand, and after that, you shall come to the hill of God, where the garrison of the Philistines is. And it will happen to you, when you come there, to the city, even you shall meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place, with a harp and a tambourine and a flute and a lyre before them, and they shall prophesy. And we go to verse 6, it says, and, they, and the Spirit of Jehovah will come powerfully on you, and you shall prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. And it will be written, it will be in these signs have come to you, you will do for yourself what your hand finds for God is with you. And you shall go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice peace offerings. You shall stay seven days 
until I come to you and make known to you what you shall do. And then verse 9, And it happened when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God changed him with another heart. And all these signs came on that day. So it was prophetically right, written. You will find this, you will find this, you will find this. You will be a changed man. And then verse 9 brings us to the pinnacle of this where it happened. It happened. God changed him with another heart. God changed him with another heart. God changed him with another heart. Do you know that the number one killer in the world in developing and developed countries throughout the world, it is heart disease that is the number one killer. And this is the stats from very long past. A few years ago, an urgent plea went out from the Skier Hospital. They were searching for a heart for a young 18-year-old boy who needed a transplant. For three weeks, nationwide, a search was conducted to try and locate a heart that would be compatible to this young man. He was an outstanding athlete, a very good student. He was committed to his family and his friends and his community. He was known in the communities. And due to a very simple complication that developed from a so-called common illness, you know, a flu, this young man's heart had enlarged and was quickly failing. His mother sat by his side, caring for him, watching over him. She used the media daily to plead for somebody to donate their heart to this young man. The whole nation heard this. They needed a new heart for her son. But sadly, after three weeks of searching without finding a compatible heart, this young man died. He died. Guys, I want you to know that although tremendous progress has been made in fighting heart disease, it continues to be the leading cause of death in the world. And this is since 1900, the case. Over 90,000 South Africans die every year from heart disease. Are you getting this? 90,000 South Africans die of heart disease. Now, 1 Samuel 10 verse 9, and I'm just drawing this analogy between, you know, physical heart disease and our spiritual heart disease. It happened when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God changed him with another heart. I believe we need new hearts, isn't that so? From a spiritual point of view, we are all heart diseased. And this was not the first heart, literal heart transplant that took place and that God, trans, uh, that God performed with, uh, with this king after he was anointed. You know, the heart is mentioned about 770 times in the Bible. However, the Bible considers it to be much more than just a muscle that pumps blood through our body. By the way, this is my pet subject, is the brain. There's 45 liters of blood that's pumped through the brain every hour by our heart. It's amazing. In one of his books, a man by the name of Robert Persick said, he said, the place to change the world is to begin with one's heart and work outward from there. Now, if we would apply that to our situation in South Africa, where should we start? We should start with the heart. I want to tell you, there is no political party 
There's no ideology that's going to change our situation. We need new hearts. And I believe this is how we should understand this, this verse where God has placed in him a new heart. Now, when I look at this political arena in, in the South Africa, this is very true. I cannot, by demolishing statutes, change a nation's ideologies. It's not going to work. A heart change is needed. Xenophobic attacks is not going to make things better, people. It's not going to make it better. We need to change the heart. A heart change is what God needs to do for us. So we're drawing this analogy. Heart disease to spiritual heart disease. And I want you to stay with me. Now, I'm not a physician, and I'm not a cardiologist. But I promise you that everyone here today has something wrong with their hearts. And we sometimes too hard-hearted and too stiff-necked to actually acknowledge that. We've got something wrong with our hearts. And what's it called? What's the problem? It's sin. We've all inherited this disease which will eventually destroy our hearts and our lives unless it's properly diagnosed and dealt with. It needs to be dealt with. It's something that's not going to come right by itself. Years, and we, we know this now, after 20 years of changing a lot of things, you know, flags and whatever, has it changed? No, we need a change of heart. John Bunyan once said, sin and corruption would bubble up out of me, out of my heart as naturally as water bubbles up out of a fountain. I believe this is so true. Go with me to Mark 7. And I want you to open your Bibles to Mark 7. And we're looking there at chapter 6 and verse, and, and, and uh, ch chapter 7, verse 6 and verse 7. Mark 7, verse 6 and verse 7. And if you get that uh, verse, just indicate by amen if you got it. I've got one or two amens. I need more. Okay, we've got more amens, all right? Mark 7, verse 6 and 7. But he answered and said to them, Well, as Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, the people honors me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. However, they worship me in vain, teaching of doctrines and commandments of men. Sometimes our eyes are focused on Canaan, but our hearts are where? Back in Egypt. We've got a focus there, but our heart is really not there. And this is really what needs to change in our own personal lives. Verse 21 and 22 says, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceeds evil thoughts and adulteries and fornications and murders and thefts and covetousness and wickedness and deceit, lewdness, evil eyes, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these things come from within and defile a man. We are sinful. And I believe that when we look at this verse, you know, we could identify with some of those things. We need new hearts. Now, the percentage of, of cardiovascular deaths, it's just, it's shocking. I mean, you could see there, now, by the way, this is a little bit of an old stat because you'll see Africa there is like 10 to 20 percent. It's much higher. It's much higher. You see there, Eastern Europe, 50 to 62 percent of the people die of heart attacks, heart diseases. South Africa's crime. To note that while 49 people are murdered in South Africa every day, a whooping 210 die of heart disease every single day. This is scary. There's a quotation that, that comes up in my mind all the time 
taken from a book called Evangelism, page 260, paragraph 4, that says, our work is to be practical. We are to remember that man has a body as well as a soul to save. So as a church, you know, we're good in soul saving, but there's people dying out there with heart disease that we could actually save their bodies by the information that we are sharing today and other words. Now, contrary to the popular misconceptions, heart disease is not just a disease for men. I mean, I've heard this many times, you know, this is what men normally dies of. No, um, we find it's a leading cause of death in both men and women in our, in our society today. And it's no longer just a disease of the older people. It's not just the older people that die of this. A full 45% of heart attacks occur in people under the age of 65. And a 5% strike young, 5% strike young people under the age of 40. My, one of my best friends died at 40. 40 had a fatal heart attack. He was gone. One heart attack. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, you know, we have inherited a heart disease that's there. It's a ticking time bomb. Because that's what sin is. It's a ticking time bomb. Now, spiritually, heart disease affects us all people. It affects us all. It's something you cannot run with. And you heard me saying we all got a defect on our heart. Now, when an airline jet crashes and 200 to 300 people die in that plane crash, it makes world headlines. Yes or no? Yes. yes. But in the United States alone, there's like an equivalent of 10 planes, jumbo jets, of people dying every day. And do we... And because of heart disease. Do we, we see headlines about that? No. We've become so used to it. You know, it's like, you know, this happens. You're either going to die of cancer or you're going to die of heart disease or you're going to, you know, or diabetes. I mean, you're going to die. You have to die. I mean, you're going to die of one of those things. And so we've, we've just become very, very, you know, used to this. Uh, astounding. 2,600 people die every day of heart disease in the States. So why no news? Why no news? Sadly, it's because most people have come to accept it. Uh, heart attacks, it's part of life. You know, we're going to die of this or we're going to die of something else. Now, Ezekiel 33 verse 1 to 7 is really pushing me today. And I need to give you this straight message. The Lord spoke to me, mortal man, he said there in Ezekiel. And I want you to get that verse because I want you to make sure that I'm talking the truth now. So Ezekiel 33 verse 1 to 7 and once again, if you've got that verse, it's in the Old Testament, you can just turn to chapter 33, and when you get it, just say amen, so I know that we can proceed. Amen. All right, I've got one amen there. All right, we've got a few more. Ezekiel 33, verse 1 to 7. The Lord spoke to me, and he said, mortal man, he said, tell your people what happens when I bring water to a land. The people of that country choose one of their number to be a lookout, a watchman. So he's going to sit there on the wall. And when he sees the enemy, what's he going to do? He's going to call out and say, enemy is coming. Yeah. Enemy is coming. Now look at what the Lord instructs us to do. When he sees the enemy approaching, he sounds the alarm. He warns everyone. If someone hears it, but pays no attention, and the enemy comes and kills him, then he is to blame for his own death. But now listen to this. Look at this. His death is his own fault, because he paid no attention to the warning. If he had paid attention, he could have escaped. If, however, the lookout sees the enemy coming, does not sound the alarm, he does not blow the whistle, the enemy comes, kills those sinners, but I will hold the lookout responsible for their death. There's some translation that says, the, his blood will be on your hands. And so guys, I want to tell you what I'm sharing with you today is actually dangerous stuff. Because you cannot go out and say, I did not know. After these sessions, you cannot say, I didn't know. Our, we are lookouts. We are, we are to warn the people. 
They should not die before their time because we have not told them, guys, be careful. We can prevent heart disease. We can make a difference. Now, mortal man, I'm making you a lookout for the nations of Israel. You must pass on to them the warnings I give you. Now, I want to tell you, I don't want the blood on my hands. This is why I'm standing here. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a natural speaker. You know, I'm a, I'm a behind-the-scenes man. You know, give me something practical, I'll do that. I'm really comfortable with that. Standing here is not my forte. It's not my comfort zone. But God has said, you are the warning. You need to sound, sound the alarm. And I'm sounding the alarm. People, I don't want the blood, your blood on my hands. Now, for many people with heart disease, death comes as unexpectedly and suddenly as an airplane crash. You don't plan an airplane crash, do you? Except if you're a terrorist. <laughs> and I believe we're not terrorists here, okay? So, we don't plan it. It happens suddenly. The World Health Organization has stated that worldwide... About 12 million people die every year of heart problems. But up to half of them could be saved if better prevention programs were in, in effect. I've got stats now. This is a bit of an old one that says 80% of heart disease or heart attacks could have been prevented if we just follow the principles I'm going to share today. So, guys, heart attacks are preventable. While better prevention programs could cut fatal heart disease by about 50%, the research now says, uh, did I say 80%? Uh, on my screen, it says 90% of them could actually be prevented. And that's the newest research we have. So what we're saying is, simply put, 9 out of 10 heart attacks may be preventable. We could prevent it if we just share the messages with the people and we sound the alarm. Now, Let's just draw this analogy. You know, spiritual attacks. I want you to know that a spiritual heart attack is preventable. We don't always show the shines. We're sitting here, but we, we've got heart problems. It doesn't show up. But we need to sound the alarm. You know, it could happen. could happen. What causes a heart attack? What causes it? First step to conquering a heart attack or a heart disease is to understand what causes it. We need to know what causes a heart attack. Well, many times, over years, the pipes that we call vessels, blood vessels, gets blocked up. Vital arteries that supply the heart with oxygen becomes narrowed and becomes hardened. It means the blood cannot go through. This muscle needs oxygen. It needs the glucose to be able to do its work. And it doesn't get there because the pipe is blocked up. It's rusted up. And eventually, it becomes plugged up totally. And while it's very common, this disease process is not normal. It's not normal. It's not something that should happen. In fact, the vast majority of people living in societies where people have a simpler diet and lifestyle, suffer very, very little heart disease. There's just, it's not known. It just doesn't happen. So one out of six is because of, uh, oh, by the way, one out of six teenagers in America has already a big amount of cholesterol plaque built up in their arteries. One out of six teenagers. This is, this is scary. I can't give you South African stats because we don't keep those stats. And by the age of 40, and an incredible 70% have narrowed, hardened arteries. And by the time, by this time, it's not unusual for the arteries to be halfway plugged up. It means oxygen cannot get to the heart. That makes it pump. That makes 45 liters of blood go through my brain every one hour. Even at this stage, most people will feel normal and not have any symptoms or side effects. A person may feel great and yet be on the verge of a major heart attack. And it can be just like that when it ends that life. It ends a future. And it ends a life with a family member. It's really so scary. Now, in a heart attack, what happens? A complete blockage of one of the coronary arteries occurs. Now you can see on the screen there, that was a normal artery, and then you see the back lines, the shadowed lines, that artery is now blocked. So there's no blood, there's no oxygen, there's no glucose going to those cell areas. 
and the muscle actually dies. It dies. It means it cannot pump. What does it mean? I, I die. I die. And the main symptom is a chest pain. I mean, when I have a chest pain, and frequently described as a heavy feeling of pressure on the chest, that's how the feeling is described. And if the person survives, they are left with scar tissue in that area instead of muscle. And two out of three times, this will result in permanent disability, where this person cannot do the work they've done. They cannot do whatever they've done in the past. When we look, look at spiritual, uh, spiritual uh, uh, heart attack, we see a very interesting thing. What causes spiritual heart attacks? Guys, I want you to know a spiritual heart attack is something that's been there for a while already. It doesn't just happen. The attack is like that, but what causes it? It's there. It's there for a long time. Uh, it usually develops silently. And uh, I believe it's because the Holy Spirit does not find its place to our heart because of all the narrowed arteries, spiritual arteries. And it's hardened and narrowed because of our way of spiritual life, the way we think, the way we do things. With all the rubbish food, spiritual food we eat, and we keep ourselves busy. busy. You know, what really amazes me is the new stats on people using their cell phones with things like Facebook and WhatsApp and these things in comparison with the time they will spend reading God's Word. It's like shocking. We don't do it anymore. We don't do it. We feed ourselves with all the stuff that we see on the media. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit just can't get to our hearts. A simpler Christian diet leaves one safe from developing spiritual heart disease. So then we won't get that heart attack that will leave that muscle dead and my heart is dead. And by that time we actually leave Christianity. The heart muscle, the spiritual heart muscle dies. You know, it over time becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. And we can see it by attendance. We can see it by the way we deal with situations. And then it's, we just have this heart attack. Look at what uh, 2 Chronicles 36 verse 13 says. It says, and, and get that verse quickly, 2 Chronicles 36 verse 13. And uh, it says, And he also rebelled against the king of Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from, from turning to Jehovah and, and the God of Israel. And this is what we do. We sometimes... We are, we, we are stiff-necked. You're not going to change the way I live. I, I, I see this all the time. When we get these pres this, this presentations, we say, guys, you know, it's simple. You know, we're just going to change the way we eat. Don't leave my plate alone. And we've got an attitude, you know, it's stiff neck. Leave my plate alone. And it causes a heart and a heart. If the person survived the spiritual heart attack, what happens? He's normally left with scar tissue. He's normally disabled. He's, he's just, but he's not doing what God has called him to do, to be a warning. So who's at risk? Who's at risk? Who's at risk for a heart attack? Is it you that are at risk for a heart attack? Your spouse, maybe? One of your family members? How can you know? The more risk factors a person has, the greater the likelihood of suffering a heart attack. And we know that it could be, and it, most of the time, it's fatal. Now, so let's look at the big three risk factors for heart disease. Physical heart disease. Number one is smoking. Now, this is why we're running programs like the Breathe Free program, where we say, guys, let's help our nation to be non-smokers. About 30% of our uh, cardiovascular deaths are due to smoking. The good news is that those stop smoking can reduce their risk by 75% within just five to seven years. You stop smoking within five to seven years, 75% less risk of, of getting heart disease. High blood pressure. We just spoke about high blood pressure in the previous session. And uh, 
Even small increases in our blood pressure will significantly increase one's risk of a heart attack and a heart disease. So by simply reducing my blood pressure by 10 points, I can reduce my risk of 30% if I just do that small little thing. In many cases, an elevated blood pressure can be corrected by simply a lifestyle change. I mean, I can just change the way I eat, the way I drink, the diet I follow, the exercise program I do. I can change this very, very quickly. The third one is cholesterol. Overall high cholesterol, number one, contribute to our heart disease. Uh, the higher one's cholesterol, the more rapidly the clogging of the arteries occurs. I need to warn you about something that we are now finding in our, in our new research. And, it, and we had to do this research because we found people that go on a low cholesterol diet, so they don't take any cholesterol in their diet, all of a sudden, they've got high cholesterol. They're on a plant-based diet, but they've got higher cholesterol. What is happening? And we found a very interesting thing. We find that many of those people sit with chronic systemic inflammation and it's because of the cell level the 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 the, the cascades have not happened as it should have and i don't want to go into that detail because of time and it means my homocysteine raises and my body actually starts manufacturing cholesterol to plug up the holes because of the homocysteine levels that's too high that burns holes in the arteries and so this person is on a low cholesterol diet, but they've got a raised, and it's actually body making cholesterol to plug up the arteries. And this, because of the inflammation, becomes hardened, and it clogs the whole system, and it makes the artery walls hard. Push up blood pressure, and big problem. Now, when we talk of the average, we find that people and that the countries that use high amounts of cholesterol foods they've got high incidence of heart disease. So Finland is a big, big user of cholesterol high foods. Um, that is now things like you know, dairy products and so on. And you can see the highest part of their, uh, of their uh, biggest reason for their deaths is, is because of cholesterol. Um, in a serious effort to reduce heart disease in Finland, I love the studies, about 30,000 men and women were convinced to make lifestyle changes. I love the proactivity in some of these countries. So they looked at the stat and said, no, no, we can change this. We must change this. It's not like, you know, we are like this. This is our genes. It's not, not like that. No, no, we're going to make a change. And so they helped people to stop smoking in, in Finland. They helped them to lower their, their high blood pressure. And they decreased their cholesterol intake. And wow, wow, look at this. Men, 55% less heart problems. Women, believe it or not, 70% less heart problems. This is, this is profound. So how can we improve our cholesterol levels? How can we get it to a normal level? First, we need to understand which foods contain cholesterol. People, all animal products contains cholesterol. I want to tell you uh, things like meat, milk, cheese, eggs, it's high in cholesterol. We, I want you to know that there's no cholesterol in any uh, plant-based food. No cholesterol. No, zero. Zolch. Nothing. There's no cholesterol in there. So uh, by increasing the plant-based foods, reducing the, 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 the animal products in our diet, we can re reduce our cholesterol level significantly. Very big. We see this over days, people, not months, not weeks, in days. Spiritual heart attack. I want to take you there quickly. Spiritual smoking. We are sucking in the rubbish of our society. And we are, you know, infesting our our spiritual lungs with, with that. And then we, 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 we struggle with this spiritual high blood pressure problem, you know, where we get upset with God's people because they speak the truth. And uh, then we sit with a spiritual cholesterol problem. 
And the Bible says you are a lookout. You, are, you, you need to warn the people. You are, you are to warn the people. Look at this, Ezekiel 15 verse 26. People, this is a very, very important verse. Ezekiel 15 verse 26. Make a note of this because you need this verse. You need to understand this verse. It says, Ezekiel, uh, uh, Exodus 15 verse 26. Correction, Ec Exodus 15 verse 26. It says, If you will obey me completely by doing what I consider right and by keeping my commandments, I will not allow you to have any of the diseases that I brought on the Egyptians. For I'm the Lord, the one who heals you. So the people that are dying out there that are not believers of God, those things that they die of, you will not get their diseases if you would follow my commandments. And by the way, it's so nice to, to go and look at what the Egyptians died of because they mummified their dead. And so they just took these mummies and they put them through MR scans. They dissected them and they found they died of osteoclerosis. They died of heart disease. They died of diabetes and cancer, obesity, stress. Duty. Does it sound familiar? This is what we die of. So I want to say to God's people today, I'm saying, people, listen, we should not die of those things. It's Egyptians that die of those things, not us. How can we... How can heart disease be treated? Well, from, from a medical point of view, um, when my arteries are now all blocked up and I'm saying, showing the signs of a heart attack, they would, in emergency measure, put in a little stent that would open the artery so that there could be flow. And many lives are saved by this. Shorter. Are you with me? They put in a like a little balloon, and they pump it up, and they open it up a bit, and then they put the stent in. We could have a bypass surgery where they take an artery out of my leg, and they connect it there where that artery is now blocked to bypass that, and that's why it's called a bypass. And so many people have a three bypass, and a four bypass, and a five bypass, and this is what they do. Um, notice in this graph that I just shared with you, those that have the lowest cholesterol levels, like Japan, have the lowest rate of heart disease. On the other hand, as cholesterol level rise, so does the death rate rise. And so it's something that we can do about it. So you've seen the stats where very simply this could be changed by just changing my lifestyle. And the result is just profound. Now, how do I reduce that intake? We spoke about I need to make a decision. Am I going to take plant-based food or am I going to take animal-based food? And we are dictated in our Western society. You need to have so much protein. You need to have so much. Guys, I want you to know that we're in trouble if we would follow this. Okay, so how are we going to avoid this? We need to avoid, how can we avoid a heart attack? We need to avoid heart disease by means of stop smoking. And this is what we need to warn people out there. We need to help them with high blood pressure. We need to help them to get their cholesterol lower. And we're going to go back to those original diets that God has given us. Those, those beautiful plant foods that's got color in them, that's got flavor in them, that's got beautiful, you know, smells to them. I mean, have you ever smelled a good spawn speck when it's ripe? Yes. Just, I can see the saliva dripping in this audience. <laughs> That, that mango, if you cut that mango, you know, that, that mango smell, you know, and that juice that runs, you know, and that, that pineapple, you know, Eastern Cape pineapple, you know, queen, you know, pineapple, you know, beautiful, beautiful. Plants, foods, are, they are rich in fiber. They, they're rich in phytochemicals and vitamins and uh, antioxidants that, that work together to help to protect you from having a high blood pressure and from obesity and from other health risks that would, that would lead to heart disease. I mean, it would just, what else can we do? What else can we do? Well, it's choices, people. I can choose. I'm eating food from the ground, not food from the shelf. It's a choice. It's, it's basically looking at what I'm putting in my mouth. Hippocrates said, you are what you Eat. You are what you eat. Go for the whole grain stuff. 
Don't go for the refined stuff. I mean, you can go for the prenutra if you want to, but do it if you like constipation. I mean, that's what it does. It gives constipation. It's not a good food because the fiber is taken out. The germ is taken out. The health part of it is taken out. You see, God gives us a package and we try to do things our way. And we really mess up as human beings. We mess up so badly. Go for God's package. Go for those beautiful fruits and vegetables, fresh as possible. It will make such a difference. Go for those, those fats, those nuts. I showed you in our previous session, you know, go for the olive oil. Go for those natural things that God has given us. It will make a major difference. Go for the legumes. We miss the, so much of our lives because we've got the stiff nakedness. You know what? This is how we have been taught to eat in our home. Leave me alone. And we, we really, we really not benefiting from this. I need to achieve a healthy weight, people. Can you see what's happening in the previous session and what's happening now? Can you see a repetition? Yeah. And guys, what we do is, in our last little sentence, because people say, you know, how is it that you've got these major, major results in your last little sentence? We are just following this very, very strictly. No compromise. And we see results within days. So achieve a healthy weight. Strive to achieve your ideal weight. And so if you're underweight, on our, on our same program, we see people actually gaining weight. Because I heard somebody ask about that. <laughs> yeah, you actually see somebody gaining weight on the same program. There would be 10 people on a program, and they would be there for 10 days, and the person that needs to lose weight, they lose weight, they would eat the same, they would do the same activities. That one that needs to gain weight, they actually ate the same, but they gained weight, they did the same exercise. It's just something I cannot explain to you. It really happens. Regular exercise. Reviewing, reviewing 43 well-known studies on exercise, we find that they all agree those who are physically active have half the risk of inactive people. And let me tell you, our society has a problem with that. We've got one muscle that's really working out every day. It's a thumb. Pushing those buttons. You with me? That's activity we get. Pushing the remotes. We're not getting into exercise. And I'm talking to us. I'm talking to us. It's not showing a finger at anybody. Guys, you have half the risk if you would do exercise. Exercise can include a variety of things. It's not like you must go and run, you know. You must go to the gym. No. It could be, you know, it could be walking. It could be biking. It could be swimming. Even gardening could be a major, major good exercise. You need to just get your heart rate a little bit up. You're breathing a little bit deeper. We need to sweat a little bit. I mean, it's as simple as that. People, I want you to know, I'm repeating what I said in the previous session. You need to avoid alcohol. This is a major, major contributor to heart disease. Alcohol uses, uh, use is a significant risk factor in heart disease. It damages the heart muscle. By the way, there's some research that really confuses people. I don't know if you're aware of that research that says if you have a glass of wine, you know it's really good for your heart. And uh, what we find now is <laughs> it is basically not, uh, definitely not the alcohol that you are drinking in that wine. It's the red coloring in the red grapes that you get from the skin. So if you would do that with grape juice, you would have better result because you won't have the side effects of alcohol. And so, you know, we, 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 are, we are led on the nose by these guys saying, you know, this is it. You have to have a glass of wine a day. That will keep your heart healthy. Guys, this is, this is really so important. You need to control stress. Um, stress on heart disease is really connected. A survey of heart attack survivors found that half of them had experienced serious stress within a day prior to their heart attack. And uh, these stressful events include deadlines. I mean, boss says, you will have that report on my desk on Friday. It's external factor. It's there. Or uh, it could be something like 
a fight. It could be like a disagreement in the family. It could be a disagreement in the church. It could be a disagreement at your work. It could be a fight. It could be something like a death in the family, a high stress level, death in the family. Or it could be something financial. You know, I lost my work, lost my job. We need to learn to, to control stress. And you know what I've, what I've learned? And I, I'm just saying this humbly. I've learned to trust God really makes a difference in stress. Where there's some factors that I cannot change. I mean, I cannot change the factor that the economy is really crashing and I might not get my salary in the end of the month. It's reality. I cannot change it. But I can change the way that I believe in God dealing with that. Because He can sort it out. I don't have a way to sort it, but He can sort it out. We need to maximize sunlight benefits. People, this is one of those neglected areas. You need to get more in the sun. A problem that we find is in our Western society is we leave home when it's dark and we come back home when it's dark. And the whole day we're sitting in the office. I want to really challenge you. Midday, lunchtime, and by law you need to get a lunchtime. Go and have a walk in the sun. Get exposure to the sun. It's so important. If you've got a darker skin, you need more exposure. I need at least 15 minutes to 20 minutes a day of sun exposure. And by the way, when you've got glasses, that's a time you'd have to just take it off for that 10 minutes of that half an hour so that you can have sunlight even coming through your eyes because it will actuate my gland, like my pituitary gland. It will actuate it to start releasing those hormones tonight between 10 and 12 tonight to go and restore cells that got damaged today. It's so important to have this information. People, what about genetics? What about genetics? Someone might say, you know, you know, my mother, she's died of a heart attack and, and her mother died of a heart attack. It's in our genes. So I've got now a tendency to, to, to go in the same direction. Guys, I want you to know that we, stop, we need to stop blaming our, our fathers and our grandfathers or whatever for our problems. And I wish we can do this in our country. Start blaming, stop blaming, you know, what happened there. We, we need to take the situation as it is now. We need to make a difference for the future. And so the evidence is very clear with this. Heart disease do, does not need to be the number one killer. It does not have to be. You see, faulty genetics may load the gun, but it is your lifestyle that pulls the trigger. And I can say it, I'm standing here as an as example. I mean, for all practical reasons, with my father died at 43 of cancer. By the way, from the day he was diagnosed till the day we buried him was five weeks. My aunt died very short life after she was diagnosed. She died of cancer. I was diagnosed with 30, at 34. So if this is true, that it's genetics, it's, 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 your, it's your lot, it's going to happen to you, then I should not stand here. I had to make serious lifestyle changes. I know God is the healer and He's really intervened in my life. But He's helped me to understand the principles that I'm trying to share with you. People, I want you to know that I need to make the right choices in life. I need to make the choices. Improving your lifestyle in the way that I do things, in the way that I eat, will protect you. It will protect me. This is really the answer. Ultimately, our personal health will determine by whether we choose to allow ourselves to become chained to appetite and tradition. That's our biggest problem. We are changed by our appetites. We are chained by our tradition. Our tradition says we need to do something in a certain way. You know, I come from an Afrikaner background. It's Breifleis in Burevors. And this is why the Afrikaner die like flies. <laughs> Are you getting it? And I want to tell you, it's not too late. It's not too late. You know, you might sit here and say, well, the problem is there already. I want to tell you, it's not too late. I'm giving you the example of this man, and I'm telling his testimony all over the place, because this is one of those miracles that I say, Lord, you know, I don't understand this. This man uh, made contact with me over the phone in 2012, in August, and uh, 
after watching the series called Brain Power over television, he made some applications of the principles that I have suggested. Now, he had a thick and hard wall and a, a high blood pressure and, you know, heart disease was, was uh, part of his problem. He was diabetic, 95 units of insulin per day. He could not work. He was 22 years boarded from work already. And, um, and when I met him and I took his blood pressure, it was 220 over 185. I remember that day I, 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 I said to my secretary, I said, please phone an ambulance. Because I was scared this guy's going to die on me. And, you know, he was red in the face and I could see he was breathing hard. You know, it was like not the hardest day, you know, so that wasn't the cause. Hard, a large heart, thick and hard wall. And I sat down with him. And uh, I showed him the principles. His wife was with him, and he, she changed their diet. And guys, the amazing thing is that in only six months' time, when I took his blood pressure again, no medication, 120 over 75. By that time, he's lost like 45 kgs. On no special diets. It was basically the principles that I shared with you now. He followed those principles, and amazing result. I want to end this session with a recall notice. And I want you to take this to heart today. Because our only answer, even with a stiff-necked, hard-hearted problem, there's only an answer. And let, I want you to, to, to figure out what the answer is. The maker of all human beings is recalling all units manufactured, regardless of make or year, due to a serious defect in primary and central component of the heart. This is due to a malfunction in the original prototype units called, uh, codenamed Adam and Eve, resulting in the reproduction of the same defect in all subsequent units. This defect is most commonly known as SIN. Some other symptoms is loss of direction, Foul offensive language, lack of peace and joy, selfishness, violent behavior. Does it sound familiar? Depression, confusion in mental component, fearfulness, idolatry, rebellion. The manufacturer, who is neither liable nor at fault for this defect, is providing factory authorized repair and service free of charge to correct the SIN defect. The preparer technician, Jesus, has generously offered to bear the entire burden of the staggering cost of these repairs. No additional fee will be required. The webpage to visit is www.prayer.com. Once connected, Please upload, upload your burden of SIN by clicking on the repentance button. Next, download atonement into the heart's component from the repair technician whose name is Jesus. Yes. No matter how big or small the SIN defect is, Jesus will replace it with joy and with love and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Please see the operating manual, sometimes referred to as B-I-B-L-E, for further details. There's a warning. Continuing to operate the human being unit without correction will void any manufacturer's warranties exposing the unit to damages and problems too numerous to list and will result in the human unit being permanently and inevitably damaged. For free emergency service, call on Jesus. Danger. Human units containing the SIN defect will not be allowed into heaven. Therefore, we strongly suggest you take the appropriate measures sooner rather than later. Thank you for your immediate attention. I want to tell you people, the Spirit is preparing you for a new heart. But he can't replace this old one until you give him permission to do so. You see, you need to sign the document that says, 
you can do this. You and I have to sign the document. And I believe the Lord is still standing at the door, and He's standing at your heart door today, and He's saying, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear my voice and you open the door, I will come in and I will be with you and you will be with me. I believe this is our only answer. My friends, today I need to just remind you that the Lord says that He has come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. He does not want you to suffer. He does not want you to suffer from a spiritual heart defect. He does not want you to suffer from a physical heart defect. That's not our, our God's wish for us. May we ask Him today to say, Lord, please, take this heart of stone out and give me a heart of flesh. Give me a new heart so that the stiff nakedness would disappear and I would follow your principles. It's really very simple. May I pray for you in a special way? If you, if you need special prayer today, maybe you're sitting there and you're saying, Lord, I need a new heart. You know, this, this sin thing has really taken the best of me. And you're saying, I want a new heart. I want you to just put up your hand. I want a new heart, Lord. I'm in trouble. I need a new heart. Lord, you are seeing the hands of those people that are expressing their desire to have a new heart. And Lord, although we think that we have the answer for everything as human beings, we've got no idea. you the only one that can change this. Even, Lord, the, the way that I live, the way that I eat, I, Lord, our willpower is so, it's so weak. We cannot say no to things when they are screaming from the table to us to say, eat me, eat me, eat me. We, we just can't do that, Lord. We don't have the strength. We don't have the inner strength. And we ask that you would send your spirit now upon each one, that you will strengthen us inwardly to say, no, I want to do the best. I don't want to live shorter and, and not a quality of life. Lord, thank you for answering the prayer of touching each one today. Give us a new heart, Lord, we pray. And we pray this, not because we deserve it, but in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our only hope, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.